All right, so this is the video for how to find the length of a line segment. Now, prior to watching this video, you should have done this tech investigation on the OERB. If you have not done that yet, make sure that you do go there and do this investigation first. Once you've completed it, you can come back to this video. So if you've done that, um, you should already have the formula then for the length of a line segment. So to find the length of a line segment, we use the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this can be written in different ways as well. You might see the y's written first and then the x's in the second bracket. That's fine. Or sometimes people like to write the one first and the two second. That's okay as long as it's consistent amongst both sets. So from the investigation, hopefully you recognize that it's just an alternate form or a bit of a variation on uh, Pythagorean theorem. So when we're finding the length of this line segment, ultimately it's the height of the hypotenuse where the other two sides are simply our rise and our run. So you should recognize that y2, y1 as our rise and the x2 minus x1 as our run from our slope formula. And then of course we're squaring the sides, taking the square root to find the side of the hypotenuse. So everyone's answers for this portion of the activity will be different, so it's not something we're going to take up, but if you have questions about that, feel free to talk to your teacher. So moving on to the next page, we're going to work through these first two examples together using the formula and being careful, of course, with our integers. So to start off with, I want to find the line segment uh, or the length of line segment AB. So to show that, we just write AB equals, and then we're going to grab the formula. So AB is equal to the square root. Nice long square root bar, make sure it covers up all your data here. So we're going to find our x values, x2 minus x1 in brackets squared plus y2 minus y1 and drop down here. So I'm going to start by simplifying that first set of brackets. So negative 4 minus 6 gives me negative 10 squared and 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2, also squared. Because we're always squaring these numbers, we're always going to end up with positives here at the end. So negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Simplify by adding those together and we get the square root of 104. Now if we try to take the square root, we are going to get a decimal answer. So the instructions tell us up here to leave your answers as a square root where required. So in this particular instance, if we round, we're going to have an inaccurate answer. So we'll leave it as a square root. But if this were some sort of word problem where we're asking for a line of or the distance between two places, um, you would want to state your answer rounded to one or two decimal places or as was suggested in the question. But for an activity like this, we'll just leave it as accurate as possible, so we leave it in square root format. So for number two, same thing. In this case, my endpoints are CD, so we're going to write CD is equal to square root of, and start substituting our numbers into the formula. So we're going to grab our x2, negative 3, minus x1, squared, plus y2, minus now we're subtracting a negative number, just like we do sometimes in slope formula. So you either have to put that negative into brackets, or if you're comfortable doing so, you can just change it to a plus sign and combine them together. Negative 3 minus 5 gives me negative 8. 4 minus a negative 2 gives me 6. So I'm just going to put the 6 down without brackets since it's a positive number. 8 times 8, or negative 8 times negative 8, gives me positive 64. 6 times 6, 36. So in this case, we get the square root of 100, and 100 is a perfect square number. If we take the square root, we get 10. So we can simplify that right up to 10. So what I'd like you to do is pause this video, try questions 3 through 6 on your own, calculating the length of each line segment, and then pop the video back on to check your solutions when you're done. All right, so you paused the video, got those questions done. Now let's see how you did. 
So question number three, you should have gotten the square root of 50. Question four is 10. Now if you got those wrong, feel free to pause the video on this spot right here so you can follow through and check where your answers are incorrect. Scrolling down here to five and six. So these ones both worked out nicely for us, five and 10 for number five and six. You might notice as well with number six that one of these zeroed out, negative three minus negative three is zero. If you think about these two coordinates, six comma negative three, is somewhere oh here-ish, and negative four negative three is somewhere around here. So what this gives us is a horizontal line. So when we subtracted these values here, my y2 minus y1, or my rise, I got a rise of zero, which indicates to me that this is a horizontal line. So just a little interesting fun fact there when you're getting a zero under the square root. All right, guys, that's it for this video on length of a line segment. See you tomorrow.